going to start with this one. Okay. Okay. Yep. This is Mullen. Is everybody here at Scone Top? I'm only going to do it once. Anyway, this is Mullen. If you have sore muscles, you can make a tea out of this and put it on your sore muscles and it'll make them not sore anymore. It, the leaves. Yeah. If you use the root and you have lung problems, you can make a tea out of the root and drink the tea. And it'll get rid of your lung problems. See these flowers? Mm -hmm. this, what you do is you make garlic oil and put these yellow flowers in the garlic oil and it'll heal your ears. This is the best medicine you can ever find to heal your ears. Do you drink it? No, garlic oh, oil. And put it in your ear. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, and then you hmm. massage down your ear and these mullein flowers are fantastic. Don't take the dried out ones, you got to take these fresh ones. And when I'm doing it for medicine, I'll come out there every morning and just pick the fresh ones. You got to do it early in the morning before the sun's up almost because the medicine's very strong at that time of day. But uh, so there's three things I told you to do with this. What are those three things? What? Go ahead. What? Okay. Okay. Uh, can you smoke the leaves? Yes. You can't. <laughs> yes, you can't. Yes, you can. It's a nice muscle relaxer. You can vaporize them as well. Yeah, I've had it vaporized. It's really good. We have somebody else that wants it. I'm going to say that if they are, let them dry or in a tea, they will, as they will help heal the lungs, as you said. But it's also used in a healing tobacco mix to help people stop smoking and heal the lungs at the same time. Nice. The fruit, and I'm going to use a friend's description because uh, there's certain things I haven't experienced. And when I explain to them how to use the fruit, they feel the sciences. Yeah, and it has worked for people who were scheduled for second sinus surgery. One person was scheduled for 72 hours and was hemorrhaging. There was other things put with it, but this one opened the sinuses with no side effect. Okay, take the fruit, it's going to clean it. When you say your prayers, you use the fruit. Then you clean it, just run water over it, you're not going to go spray it. Okay, I think it will. Clean it good, get rid of the dirt, let it dry. I will go get my own Then you take it and you light it. You know, and when the fire comes up, blow it out because all you want is the red embers. And then, the way I was told is, oh, you're snorting coke. <laughs> you take so that the smoke, you hold the root under, but the smoke is going to go up one nostril, close the other. Inhale, strong. And do the same with the other side. And you keep doing that. You keep relighting the root and inhaling the smoke only until you feel it all the way back here. And it will open up the small, small sinuses that they can't clear out with chemical medication. Because your skull is actually has small hollow things all the way through it. That is a very valuable medicine plant. To put it in my place. And that's the mullein leaf or the root that you're the doing? Root. The root. And for the sinuses. For the sinuses. The leaf to heal your lungs and to help stop, uh, to help break tobacco habit. Right. By drying it and adding it with some other things or a healing tobacco smoke that you smoke instead of cigarettes or put into a pipe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more thing about this plant. The first year we'll have this rosette that lays on the ground, it won't be very tall. The second year, it will send a spike up with the flowers. The third year, it will either either be bigger. And after the third year, it dies. So if you ever see this growing and you think it's the third year, just pull it up because it's not gonna live after that. Like she was saying, get the, get the root. The first year, the medicine is in the root. That's when you want it. Okay. okay. The second and the third year, don't even mess with the root. Oh. Well, after a rain. Also, the flowers, people think the price that's being charged for the organic is ridiculous, but he has to go out every morning and pick the freshly flowered blossoms, put them into the oil. He has to remove the brown ones out of the oil, and he can't use it as a medicine until it's reached the proper color. So you keep adding more of the fresh and removing the old. Because you don't want them to decompose in that way.
they'll sour. They're spoiled. And you don't want them to sour. And this is what I'm just talking about with these. Anyway, awesome plant. I'm going to put it back here so I can clear my table a little bit. Tell them about yarrow. I told people about it a little bit ago. Blood. Right? Yarrow. Yarrow, can you chew on it? And then you put it on one of your cuts and it'll plant No, same thing. He's right. <laughs> Plantain's awesome. I didn't see any plantain, so I didn't get any. If I'd seen some plant, oh, I'm wrong. Would you look in my pickup and see? I I grabbed that handful. It might be in the back somewhere. Thank you. So we can talk about plantain. But anyway. Uh, the, the, if you make a tea out of the flowers, it'll make you really, really hot and it'll make your blood go really, really fast. When people go into the sweat lodge, if they would make a tea out of these flowers, they go into the lodge and their blood is going to be rushing. They're going to get hot. And you want a really hot sweat? Make some uh, yarrow tea because it'll get you going. Here's the other interesting thing. How, if it'll get you going like that, how come it stops you from bleeding? Is that confusing to you? Yeah. 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 I don't understand it. It's medicine? A coagulant. Must have. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, like he said, the leaves from this uh, stop bleeding. Here's another plant. Okay, let's stop there. Okay. You know how people get old ulcers, the dark sores on their legs and such, and particular diabetics that won't heal? Mm hmm. If you take this, and you make a poultice, you get your water hot, Here. like he's talking yeah, about, put the leaves in, and make it really thick, and then pack that wound with that, and guess what? The ulcers will start healing, and they'll heal from the inside out, even ones that are years old. It is a wound healer. Pass it around or keep it or something like that. Uh, the, the flowers for a tea. Flowers for tea and the leaves are for Pulse. compress. Yes. <laughs> and the Stop flowers the also help to break. No, you've got no, a cold, a virus, I but bringing can. everything and making you sweat profusely will help break that. Oh. So every time I smell it, every don't smell it. <laughs> I'm teasing you, okay? Anyway, uh, this is what's left of some plantain. Tell us about plantain. Hi. Okay, why? Why would you want to put it on your cut? Okay, <laughs> this is the best band-aid out there. If I'm anywhere, and I've used it many, many times, I, pe I teach people flint napping, making arrowheads, and everybody cuts themselves. So I make sure that there's some plantain there. They cut themselves within two minutes, they're back napping. It is the best thing I've ever had for that. Here's the other good thing about this. If you make a tea out of it and, or eat a leaf, if you've eaten something and your digestive system's messed up, this will heal ulcers in your stomach. I'm not around medical people, so I can claim that. When I'm out selling my stuff, I can't make medical claims. But this will get rid of ulcers. Here's, uh, here's my favorite story about plantain. This is actually English plantain. There's one that's Plantago Major, which is round. The Plantago Major is very strong medicine, and it will really get rid of ulcers. This may, but this isn't as strong, this English plantain. Ribwort plantain, yes? The black plantain with the roundish leaves? Not black, it's green. If it's black, it's been hybrided. It's been cultured. That's not native. Oh. Okay. There's yarrow. And the, this is native. There's other yarrows that aren't native, and they're, they're yellow, and they're beautiful, or pink, and any other color, salmon color, and all color. Always but, be careful when you get the ones called officials, because otherwise they don't have the medical properties. That, like he says, they're high bred and they're... Yeah. Uh, another thing about plantain, I have three different salves over here, and I put plantain in one of my salves. In one of the salves, there's yarrow because it's phenomenal for the skin. This is one of the best things there is for the skin. It's fantastic for healing your skin. That's why I put it in the salves. And it doesn't have all of those nasty... I have a question, Ted. Yes. 
the medicinal part of the plant is the leaves. And, yes. And what about the stalks and the little things on top? Are those is that the what I understand is that psyllium husk? Yeah. Uh, well, here's the psyllium. Oh, the horse that's tail. Horse tail. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't used it for that. I don't know about that. Do you? No. Psyllium. That's not psyllium. It's not. Okay. okay. Is that good for anything? That helps you have, right. It helps with the wild right. With the what? I'm sorry. <laughs> the psyllium husk. Oh. But, uh, your seeds have a very high healing energy because everything is gone to them. Yeah. So you could use them. And then, but the key is to learn also to how to work with the plant spirit. We have scouring rush. Horsetail. Mm -hmm. This has silica in it. This will build, mend your bones. You have fractures in your bones. This will mend it. But some people can't digest. It's hard on the system. Hard on your system to have that silica in there. So some people have to think about it and work with it. Ladies that want pretty hair and nails, that really does help. And I, definitely, I'm not one that's using it. Oh, well, I need that. Do you use it? Make a tea out of it? Or? Yes. Yeah. And, it, and it's high in moisture too. Like it's got a big water content, right? Yeah. Well, but some people call them pull aparts. This is the male one. The female one they call pull aparts because they see these things and you can just pull it apart just like that. Here, you want to pull it apart? It's called a pull apart. And it's the whole aerial part of the plant Yeah, for the silica. But, yeah. But what's neat about. They call it scouring rush or bottle brush. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can use it for sandpaper. They used to use it for cleaning pots. Yep. yep. Yeah. Oh, I have my Mullen tea here. If you want to read about using it, I have the recipes on the back. And then, oh, here. I heard somebody, I told the name of this earlier. We call this Iridoctum californicum. You like that name? <laughs> What's the other name? Gamma. Gamma. <laughs> okay, the Wintu name for it is Mountain Bomb. And our, our word for Mountain Bomb is not the word for Earth or something, we call it Kacha. It's spelled with a C A U C H, but it's spelled, pronounced Kacha. And you kind of guttural that first C, it's Kacha. Kacha. Anyway, uh, I have my smoke mix, and I put yerba santa and mullen and another plant, dock, and I didn't see any dock on the way up. All three of those are fantastic for your lungs. They are the best lung medicines you can get. And I, sometimes I'll put some celery root in there, and um, I'll show you about the celery root, but I'm not going to pass it around. Whoa. But uh, Ooh, this is called tuachi. And the Wintu people use this, and the phenomenal thing about this root is it has your spiritual, your physical, and your mental health going. This helps you be a whole being. And if you've had trouble, most of the time when people are sick, it's not because their physical body is sick, because their emotional body is sick. Or their physical body and their spiritual body. And this is the root that does this. When we started the fire the other day, we put one of these in there. And the reason we put it in the fire and burned it with the first fire is so all this time when people are doing ceremony, they can be balanced. And so the reason we burned it is for everybody to be balanced, whether you're a supporter or what you're doing here, whether you're going to dance or what. Because people need to have their whole beings here in a helpful way. Uh, all three of my salves have yerba santa in them. My poison oak remedy has yerba santa, and I sell the tincture out of yerba santa. This will get rid of mucus in your body. Colds and flus live on mucus. Uh, my friend knows about macrophages, but we're not going to talk about macrophages. <laughs> but anyway, there's extra mucus in the body. Colds and flus feed on that. Allergies create that. And if you make a tea out of this and drink it, it'll get rid of all that mucus. And for your skin, there's absolutely nothing better. People talk about aloe vera. This is up there with aloe vera as far as being good for your skin. And, it's and what? And it's local. And it's, like I said, 
everything here I got off after I turned off the highway, just right down the road here. Good stuff. Um, I'll talk about that stuff in a little bit. Is there anybody that didn't smell this stuff? Mm, Did you smell it? Mm. Isn't that wonderful? Did you smell the penny roll? Okay. This is probably at the top of the list of one of the best three plants there is for uh, getting rid of mosquitoes and flies and any insects that are bothering you. Eucalyptus is good too, right? Uh, that's not a native, but yes. Okay, how come you know it's a mint? Because the smell, it smells like mint. Okay, that's not a good reason. The reason it's a mint is because it has a square stem. Here's another plant. This is called coyote mint. And the reason this is called coyote mint is it's not really a mint. And that's everybody's name for it, is calling it a mint, or coyote mint. You know about coyote? Okay. What do you know about coyote? It's trickster. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, this is phenomenal also for getting rid of flies and mosquitoes and other things on you. Now, I've heard rumors about the penny roll that it's not good for pregnant women. That it, Don't take it internally. That it used to be used as some sort of a, an abortion tea when mixed with lots and lots and lots of other stuff. Yes. Well, like, uh, uh, me, uh, what's that stuff in the oak trees? Uh, anyway, yes. Yes. Okay. So it is. Okay. It is a true thing. Yes. Adults have eaten higher fat, fatty foods than babies. Mm -hmm. So when it's an upset stomach, you want the burger mint, which is also called orange mint. When it's an infant, you want spearmint, which is gentle on the stomach. Spearmint. Okay. And uh, if there's colic with infants, I smelled it when I came in, but I haven't found the tree. Bay leaf. Bay leaf. Bay leaf okay. tea. It will, and no side effects except the infant will sleep. <laughs> That's a good side effect. That's a good idea. Poisonous? I was always taught bay leaf was poisonous. Mm -hmm. Up the bay tree. Dear heart, there's what? California Bay. bay Laura. Poisonous though? No. No. That's what I'm talking about. That was the one I smelled when I came in. Yeah. Just haven't been able to hike up and find it. Oh. <laughs> Aside from what we're doing here, did y'all see after you turned off the road to come up here, the grandmother oak tree? Isn't she phenomenal? She's on this side of the road. We sat there and it sang to us. It was awesome. It was like, wow. <laughs> There's been a lot of wild going on here for four days. Well, she, this was before anybody was here. Ah. She was talking down there. Okay. Oh, she's beautiful. Rosie, you've talked to her, haven't you? Who? Grandmother. The oak tree, yeah. It was spraying right she's underneath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the other day we were leaving and went down there, and she hollered at us. She, I mean, she hollered. She said, you're stopping here. i got to talk to you. That's called plant spirit medicine. That's when you learn to listen to the plants. Anyway. They will tell you. Okay. Who knows what this is? Okay. River sage. No, it's called river sage. Mugwort. You can call it mugwort. No, it's cut. We're going to call it river sage. And he calls it wormwood. Some people even call it artemisia. This will get rid of parasites. Oh, really? In a tea? In a tea? <laughs> call it what? What was that last name? Bear plant. Bear plant. Mm. There's many plants called bear plants. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, here's an interesting thing. Have you ever been to a Chinese medicine doctor and they make have this stick and they burn it Moxie. over your skin? Moxa? This is what it's made out of. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Here's what's fantastic about this plant. If you make a wreath around it and put it under your pillow, most people know about the Ojibwe Dreamcatcher. Oh, Did you know that the uh, Dreamcatcher originated with the Ojibwe people up around Lake Michigan, what we call Michigan, or in, in that territory? But anyway, this is our version. Put this under your pillow and sleep with it, and then remember your dreams when you wake up. Because many times your dreams are messengers, this is the messenger. 
this will make sure that ugly dreams don't come to you. And sometimes people say, man, I woke up with these dreams. Well, they may be very intense. And you may wake up going, wow, because of this plant. Uh, one of my stories about this is we were having a gathering and this elder was complaining about the mosquitoes. And I said, would you like me to get rid of the mosquitoes? And she said, yeah. So she was sitting there and I walked up and I said, I'm gonna get rid of the mosquitoes. And so I started slapping her. And she went, what are you doing? And I said, you wanted me to get rid of the mosquitoes. So guess what? She didn't have any mosquitoes bothering her. If you rub it on your skin, it's different. But if you slap your skin, the oils from this really penetrate sick. with your oils. Oh. That's the proper uses uh, of it. What is it? Oh, I love to be the doctor that oh. administers that one. <laughs> also making a tea from it will help get rid of the calcites. And you'll see it's used for that too. It doesn't taste very good. I don't no. care for the taste. No. Hey, who said it had to taste good to be good? Did Mullen tea taste good? Anyway, Klamath weed. What's another name for Klamath weed? Okay, let me tell you something very interesting. When people harvest it commercially, they'll cut the whole top off. What's interesting about that is the hypericum. The pericum in there is changed, and there's the ones that are drying out, and they're turning red because that's what the pericum looks like, is the red. The medicine is in these fresh flowers. Again, you have to go out every day, every morning, and pick the fresh flowers. And you just pick the fresh flowers. You don't cut the top off like they do commercially. When doctors say, well, that's a mood elevator or uh, gets rid of anxiety and stuff, and they don't want their clients or patients to take it, it's because when it's harvested commercially, they don't do it right. Mm -hmm. They just cut the plant off and make it, and there it is. But if you were to use these fresh flowers and just take that and make the medicine out of those fresh flowers and make a tea out of it and drink it, it will mellow things out. It works with the serotonin in your body. Does everybody know what serotonin is? Mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah. Okay, it works with your hypothalamus also. Your hypothalamus is in your brain also. And it makes it mellow out. Because sometimes it gets overactive and people say they have nervous problems. That's because there's too much serotonin. It will help balance that out. Serotonin is what's between your nerves, and that's what makes signals go between your nerves. Anyway, and I make, with this sap, is I'll pick a bunch of these, I'll pick a jar, and then I'll put a little bit of alcohol in there. And what that'll do is extract the medicine, and I'll just barely get them wet, and I'll leave the jar uncovered. And after it's dried out a bit, I'll put olive oil in there. Best burn medicine I've ever seen. People know about aloe vera. This stuff here, this burns and boo-boos, phenomenal for burns. <coughs> and if you seriously hurt yourself, that's good stuff for cuts. Because the St. John's wort is fantastic for that. Does everybody know why they call it Klamath weed? No, because if cattle eat it, they'll get sick. And it came, people say it came from the cattle from Oregon and they brought it down from Oregon and they call it Klamath wheat, and it will make their milk sour. I don't know what it do for goats, but uh, it's not good stuff for that. So it's fantastic for burns and stuff. Oh, I'll talk real quick about this. This is a cool plant. I'll give you the other name, Ariognum. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, this is the bread out of and makes the flour. This is not small seeded. This is just regular wild buckwheat. And you can make things out of it. You can take the seeds and make things. And the the wind two people did that. Good stuff. I can't record. I mean, I can only record or take a picture. So I'm describing. Okay. Oh, this did have some purple flowers on here, but they've kind of dried out. Tell me what this is. Okay, give me another name. Anyway, uh, if, what? Dandelion. No, this isn't dandelion. This is, uh, besides chickweed. 
Chicory. Chicory. Thank you. Chicory. Get out of my coffee. Anyway, if you get this before it flowers, dig the root up and grind it up a bit, roast it, and it does make pretty good coffee. If it doesn't have caffeine in it, if you wait until the flowers are come out or even start to dry, uh, it won't taste very good and you won't like it. And most people go, oh, okay, there's chicory. And they go get it and they don't like it because they've waited until the flowers have come up. Get it in the spring when you can first recognize it. It's pretty much too late for it now. It won't taste very good. It also helps cleanse the liver. And that's why, that's the original reason that they started drinking it, is because it cleanses the liver. Like they were, oh, you know, some of those people back when they had to drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> Chicory was used to help get them he healthy after drinking a lot of alcohol. Think about the pioneers. They didn't have anything to do. They were bored after they'd worked. Now, this is such an awesome plant. If you haven't looked at these flowers, uh, they've kind of dried out. But anyway, let's see if there's still anything. Ah, oh, it's still lactating. Who, somebody told me about this a little earlier. What's it for? What? Tell us about that. You take, you take it, like you rip off the leaf and then you like put the little milk stuff on your water. Use a lot. It might take a couple of times. But did you notice how I pulled this off? Fantastic for cordage. You want to make a rope? And you saw me pull that off? You can make ropes out of it or string. My son tells me that it's called string. I call it cordage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, Tell us about pleurisy root. The roots of that are used in a tea to help heal the lungs and clear them up when you have uh, pneumonia and breathing problems. But and the, I'll often combine that with mullet. Yeah, I was just saying that. So milkweed and pleurisy are the same thing? Yeah. Anyway, like she was saying, you see it lactating in there. And uh, the other day, Melanie and I were out in her backyard walking around. Actually, that's your front yard, huh? <laughs> anyway, we saw a caterpillar on there. Who eats this? Monarchs. Isn't that cool? We saw a monarch caterpillar. And it was so cool. And I was like, this is cool. I was thrilled. See the What's monarch? the name of it again? Milkweed. Oh, it's just milkweed? Yeah, just milkweed. milkweed. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, everything was just down the road here. They're all weeds. Uh, they're all weeds. <laughs> Here's a plant. You, don't know what to do. you know what the definition of a weed is? Something you don't know what to do with it. The, something that the use has been lost to time. That's right. And here's another plant. I will tell you a few things about it. I'm not going to tell you a whole lot. This is serious medicine. People, uh, Florence Jones, the uh, went to... People call her a shaman. She was a medicine woman. People like the word shaman, so they called her that. But anyway, she taught me about this plant. And what this plant is used for, it will rebuild your heart. If your tissues of your heart are damaged from whatever, or say you have murmurs because the channels didn't get put together right, this will help rebuild the tissue. Also, the reason it's called number one is emotionally, if your heart's damaged, this will rebuild your heart on an emotional level. And most of the time when people get a heartache and stuff, their heart gets depleted. This will help replete your heart, replenish your heart. Phenomenal. Uh, the, thing, the reason I don't tell people a lot about it is most people know what foxglove is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what is foxglove? Do? It has digitalis and they, it's used for uh, <clears throat> as a stimulant for your heart. If it has the purple blossoms, yes. Only in the purple. Although, but you still don't want to use it if you don't know what you're doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. This can do the same thing. This can change the beat of your heart. And that's why I say, I'm not going to tell you the recipe for using it. But uh, it's phenomenal. And if you haven't pinched one of these flowers, pinch one of these flowers. I mean, they look, might look like thorns, but they're pretty cool. Here. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. Mm. Oh, they're hard and sticky. Ooh. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? It has a smell like pine a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like delicious. 
<laughs> I've seen this growing over there in um, Happy Valley between um, Redding and Ripla. I've seen it all over the place. Up. It grows. Yeah, I, I, I think this smell. is the first time I've ever seen it. Every other one I know. Point but. In the center of the blossom, it'll have white. Resin. I forget what this is. You very carefully take that out. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Do that, and it will clear up sore throats. And it's a very strong medicine. For That's with the leaves. Yeah. That's a very strong medicine to help with the uh, colds and such. But like you say, you really want to be careful and not use the whole plant. You're going to use just a little bit. And that's why you're smart to go get your stuff from someone who knows what they're doing. Because if they don't know what they're doing, they're going to really mess you up. Oh, yeah. And the other side is, I get upset because I see people, oh, I learned how to wildcraft, and they go out and they overharvest. They're killing, you're taking away those plants from us. Yeah. They can't reproduce. <coughs> you only gather a some, not all of it. No, not all of it. But people do. Yeah. I mean, the so family is lost, and they grow. Your the plants grow in families like we do. Uh huh. Really okay, so you got the floor now, so I thought maybe. Respect plants. Okay, the plants. needed to talk to a little bit, so. Um, uh, yeah. I'll try and be quick. Back to your basanta. Uh, I have to harvest. This year, we're harvesting about 2,000 pounds of dried leaves. That's just this stuff dried out. That's a lot of work. Uh, it takes us months to do. And I have 38 acres certified organic plus the properties next door to that. What's interesting is I go harvest a branch like this and I'll leave the rest of them. Even though there's four or five other branches like this, I don't take them all. I come back three or four weeks later and I'll take one of the others. I'll come back three or four weeks later, I'll take one of the others. And what's interesting is it shoots up. Every three or four weeks, I can go to the same plant and pretty much take the same stuff. Nice. It's the, it, it loves to be harvested. And if I were to cut all of the branches all at once, it would damage the plant yeah. and it would piss it off. Yeah. So this is one of the most wonderful examples of it wants the attention. It wants to be harvested in a good way. In a good way. In a good way. Um, I guess it's got the word that we need to move on and I know that Sonny wants to speak a little bit. Uh, this plant started growing before there are any non-native people here. This came from Mount Lassen in my backyard. I had a whole bunch of things that came off of it and uh, they've broken off. Uh, but what this is for is if you're cranky or irritable or you're not feeling good and you feel like there's some negative energy around you, most people know about smudging. This is what we use to smudge, and I burn this regularly. If I walk into somebody's house and the energy's not feeling good, I'll burn some of this root. And what's nice about it is it feels good. So I'm not going to plant hand this around, but if you want to handle this, you can pass that around and spare root. Yeah, but, well, yeah. <laughs> looks like bear root. Yeah, it is. Bear root. Like root. Uh, no, this is sunflower. It's called uh -huh. withia. So, that's actually the root of a sunflower plant, or a, short, a little a medicine flower. The wild ones. The, the wild, wild ones. See growing around, you'll see those yellow blossoms coming up, like okay. almost like black eyed Susan's or something. Right. This was the root from those little flowers. It smells the GMO flower. Mm. This is definitely a <laughs> let me run through what I've got out here. Some of yeah. the people have come by and tried out my fire cider. This is apple cider vinegar with some spice in there. This will light you up. If you have congestion anywhere anywhere in your body, your system, or your head, this will open it up and move it out. It's phenomenal. I highly recommend I have samples back here. Uh, this is poison oak remedy. It starts out with acorns. The acorns will get rid of whatever itches you. I'll have poison or I'll have uh, rash on my arm. I'll put this on there to get rid of hives and mosquito bites. From the acorn. Well, the man, it has acorns, manzanita leaves, yerba santa, and Oregon grapefruit. The Oregon wow. grapefruit will kill staph infection. Uh, uh, some people say, well, it's a, it's a Mahonia, and Mahonia kills staph infections. Well, what's interesting, the pharmaceuticals raise Oregon grapefruit, and uh, they harvest it in a way that's not sustainable to the plant. They destroy the plant, and 